We presented the school with numerous ideas, and all of them were shot down one by one. The first one was posting paper on a building wall. We decided to post construction paper on a building wall, much like the College Libertarians did at Pepperdine University. Michelle Fields had her whole group uh, post up paper on the wall, and they all wrote with markers. People came by and uh, said what the, said was on their mind, and it was a great event. But we knew at our school we would be dealing with a lot of bureaucracy. There are certain areas where posters are only allowed to go up, and we knew that the school would would say that we would damage the walls if we tried. So we decided not to go that route uh, and just get rid of uh, dealing with all that bureaucracy. The second was we sent in our original plan and it was to build the shape in a V shape and it would sit on the ground as a V um, and the structure of the V would hold it up and keep it supported just based off the shape. But the school still didn't like that idea. They thought it was too flimsy and would fall over in the wind. We knew for a fact it would s stay up and be a very powerful wall for the, to stand up in the wind for. Uh, and then the third idea was that we would just simply extend the legs and uh, add on an extra panel. This was, <laughs> you know, was, even though we were very, very certain that the V shape would work, we, we were like, okay, you know what, we'll work with you. We'll add on more to it and we'll make it so sturdy and so undeniably sturdy that uh, you won't be able to come to us and say no this won't work but turns out they didn't like it anyways uh, but it was this hexagonal shape uh, with with two sides and in the middle it had a connecting panel but they still didn't like that they thought uh, they, they came to us and said you know what we need this to stand up against hurricane force winds like what the heck <laughs> Hurricane force winds, are you serious? Um, we don't even have hurricanes that come through San Antonio, so why are we dealing with that? But um, we're not even, it's not even hurricane season. It's ridiculous. So we were like, you know what? Fine. We'll get tent stakes and we'll stake them in the ground and we'll extend ropes to these tent stakes. And the school still thought, well, you know, that could pose a possible tripping hazard or damage the, the, the soil around there. Uh, and we just we just don't think that'll work. And we're like, well, we can extend it and put it into trees. And they they were, they kind of entertained the idea, but they were still like, well, you know, could that clothesline people? Would that harm the trees? Uh, we have to talk to facilities about that and get that all worked out if 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 that's even possible. And then we're like, you know what? Okay, well, what do you want us to do? And they're like, well, you could buy insurance. In fact, we recommend that you buy insurance. Insurance will keep you and us from being held liable for any damages that might happen to the students or property. So, yes, buy insurance. And we're like, okay, insurance. All right, we never thought of that before. We've never done it before. How much does that cost? Well, we look up online, and it's between $1,100 and $2,100. And our jaws drop. We were devastated. We, were, <laughs> we can't afford that. That's ridiculous. We're supposed to be paying $1,100 at the minimum for a uh, activism project that we have a budget of $135 for? No, we, that, that's that's insane. <laughs> why why would they force us to do that? So, anyways, we looked up into Fire's free speech on campus book that they have with that comes with their box set, and in it, it says that insurance is like charging a fee for free speech. So we decided, okay, we'll read up on it. And it turns out there's a Supreme Court case, Forsyth County versus the Nationalist Movement, back in 1992. It dealt with a provision of a county ordinance declaring that the cost of protecting demonstrators on public property should be charged to the demonstrators themselves if the, that cost exceeds the usual cost of law enforcement. So it, it's basically the, the Supreme Court overturned this, this city ordinance uh, and said or county ordinance and said you know what we're that that would be prohibiting free speech that gives too much power to um, the administrators who would be figuring out how much the insurance would cost um, arbitrarily that would give them way too much power so if if they have that amount of power over whether or not a, an organization can express themselves freely then um, that's way too much power and that's unconstitutional
so our last idea was that we would just host the event indoors. And this was just so we could get rid of all of the bureaucracy we were going through with hosting it with all the wind and whatnot. Uh, and we were getting, it was getting closer to exam times. People were getting worried that we wouldn't even be able to host the event. Also, it was, it came in direct conflict with our debt clock. We had, we had planned on doing the debt clock for the same week, um, that week that the free speech wall had been pushed back to. So we were like, well, we can't even do that anymore. So it pushed off the debt clock off of our list of, or off of our calendar for the entire year. So we weren't even able to do the debt clock activism event because of the massive amount of bureaucracy and pushed back dates we were dealing with with the school. So uh, anyways, we were inside into in this building in the corner and it was a, we were like secluded off in the corner. So, and it was much less traffic going through there. And we planned on being in the higher traffic areas outside, but the fact that they had us inside in the secluded area miniaturized our event.